We've been busy around here and I'm excited to show you what we've been up to. It may have taken me over a year to finally get to it, but with a lot of help, I finally checked off the new floors and paint from my honey-do list. And let me tell you, that was just the beginning. We completely rearranged the main floor of our home, leaving this room completely empty, ready for a new project. So as you can see, I'm gonna take advantage of the opportunity and create the ultimate dual system, his and hers desk setup. But we all know how tough it can be to make the perfect setup for our significant other. So I'll be helping out this time around. No more surprises. Get ready to see how we pulled it off and join us on this journey as we take you from start to finish. Let's, Let's do, do this. this. Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host, CJ. And I'm your co-host, Dan, and welcome to our new home office. That's right, ours, because for the past several years, we've had separate offices, me, up in the geek cave. And mine down here, which meant on most evenings while I was down here working on classes or the finances. I'd be up there crunching benchmark results or editing my latest video. So even though we were in the same house, we were still spending a lot of time apart. Yes, and so now we can work separately together, but let's not get mushy and sentimental. Let's just tell the viewers about the desk and each of the setups. Yes, dear. So diving into the design and construction of the desk, I went through a few iterations before finally settling on what you see here. Walnut has always been my plan for the desktop. And initially I had my eyes set on a live edge walnut slab, but at a whopping 12 and a half feet long, a slab like that could set me back anywhere from $3,500 to $5,000, depending on the depth. I considered four fourths rough walnut lumber, but the price was still over $1,600, which led me to explore the ever popular Ikea Carl B countertop, definitely overused for custom YouTube desks. However, I ended up choosing a three quarter inch multi-layer walnut plywood, largely inspired by these stunning monitor stands that Grovemade sent over for the project. We'll dive deeper into Grovemade and their fantastic desk accessories in a moment, but it's worth noting that these monitor stands are handmade from walnut plywood. Now, the plywood I sourced isn't quite on par with Grovemade's quality, but I did my best to mimic the style. I rounded the corners, chamfered the edges, cut each panel to size, and sanded everything to a smooth finish. Since the plywood came pre-stained, I applied wood conditioner, followed by several layers of white bond polyurethane, buffing with double zero steel wool between each layer to achieve that perfect look. For the end legs, I found these heavy duty steel legs on Etsy and in the middle, I went with a single Ikea Alex drawer unit. I know everyone uses these, but there is a good reason. They're made specifically as desk drawers, so we have our storage and because of how they're constructed, they have the best load capacities for what they are, so we don't have to worry about the desk collapsing. The steel legs were a bit higher than the drawer unit, so I designed and printed these spacers to make up the difference. Along with my local IKEA being sold out of the larger five drawer Alex unit that may have been a better fit under this large desk, they were also sold out of the adjustable desk legs I needed. So to support the large spans on each side of the desk, I used a simple two inch PVC pipe, which I cut the size, painted and attached with a custom 3D printed mount. In all, including the supplies, the total cost of the desk to this point was only about $790. That's not bad considering the sheer size. And as much work as all that was, it's just a start. I think you should tell them about the Grovemade next because these Grovemade accessories are really what takes this desk to the next level. And they really do. Let's dive right in. I want to give a huge shout out to Grovemade for sending some of their products our way for this project with no strings attached. They didn't sponsor this video and they didn't provide any talking points, just their gear for us to review honestly, which is exactly what I'm about to do. Now, I've got to say, Grovemade products aren't cheap, but they're also not cheap, if you know what I mean. Let's take a look at Ann's monitor shelf. It's 46 inches long and crafted from three quarter inch, 14 ply veneer core walnut plywood. This stuff is high quality and more expensive than the hardwood ply I used for the desktop. And while I personally dig the multi-layer chamfered edge, if it's not your vibe, there's a solid wood option as well. The legs are one inch thick natural cork and there's a second brushed aluminum shelf to boot. All of Grovemade's products are handmade by a talented team in Portland, Oregon, using top-notch materials like sustainably sourced hardwoods, vegetable dyed leathers, and 100% merino wool felt. 
even their packaging is eco-friendly, with the largest item, that 46-inch shelf, being the only one that contains some non-recyclable foam. Now, let's quickly run through the rest of the lineup. Aside from the monitor shelf and got a walnut MagSafe stand, because as some of you may recall, her favorite part of her initial setup was her MagSafe charger, and this is definitely an upgrade. With a solid steel base weighing in at nearly three pounds and a cork foot pad, it stays put when docking and undocking the iPhone. And that's it. And setup is going to be super clean and minimal. I was so impressed with Grove Maid's gear that I bought a couple of items for myself. The medium 31.5 inch desk shelf and the walnut headphone stand. This stand is stunning. Solid walnut, brushed aluminum, and genuine leather. It weighs almost two pounds, features cork foot pads, and is slim enough to hold your headphones without stretching the frame. Lastly, we have the laptop stand, originally meant for Anne, but she decided to switch up her setup. She'll fill you in later, so I get to keep it. With a gorgeous bent walnut base, brushed aluminum accents, and a 100% merino wool felt covered tray, it should keep my laptop scratch free and looking sharp. Now, the combined total for these items is around a thousand dollars. Grove made might not suit everyone's budget, but for those willing to invest in top quality products to elevate their desk setup, check the link below to browse their full lineup of desk accessories. There's even a code for 10% off your purchase. Okay, hun, now that the stage is set, why don't you tell them about your setup? Oh my gosh, you guys, you've probably seen a bunch of this stuff in my previous surprise setup makeovers. But let me tell you, I've taken the best of the best and dished what didn't work for me. Starting off, I thought the MacBook Pro was super cool, but I faced a ton of issues like charging problems with the USB cable and my big monitor was not waking up. So I went back to the trusty Mac Mini, which is perfect for what I do. Plus it's the new M2 Pro version, which is probably overkill for me, but hey, I'm not gonna say no to an upgrade. The Mac Mini still doesn't have any front ports, but thankfully I've got this cute storage enclosure that has super convenient ports that are easy to access. As for my monitor, I'm sticking with the Samsung WQHD. I absolutely love it. There's so much space for multitasking and I don't have to deal with the hassle of dual monitors. Plus it got an amazing paint job to match my whole setup's color scheme. Now, since I'm back on the Mac Mini, I needed speakers. That Bluetooth speaker bar just didn't vibe with my Mac Mini. It kept dropping out and had this annoying buzzing sound. But guess what? Edifier sent us these gorgeous MK4 speakers to review. They're beautiful, match my theme, and most importantly, they sound incredible and work flawlessly plugged into my Mac Mini's audio jack. As for my mouse, I'm still all about the magic mouse. Yes, it's tiny and not super ergonomic, but I can't live without those extra features you just don't get with a scroll wheel mouse. I just wish they made a bigger one with a USB-C charging port that's not on the bottom. And last but not least, while I can deal with a tiny Apple mouse, there's no way I can type on that itty bitty keyboard. I'm obsessed with the Keychron K4 CJ got me. It has a full number pad and it doesn't feel like a kitty toy. Plus, with a fresh paint job, new keycaps, and a fancy coiled cable, it totally completes my clean and minimal look. <laughs> You criticize the Apple mouse charging point. Prepare yourself for the backlash from the magic mouse apologists in the comments. Whatever, bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> ah, all right, let's dive into my sleek setup. First off, I've chosen a theme that harmoniously contrasts with the other side of the desk. Think of it as the yang to her yin. Now, since she snagged the M2 Pro Mac Mini, I went for the M1 Pro MacBook, which delivers performance on par with my Mac Studio back in my studio. This means I can seamlessly transition between the two workstations without missing a beat. For now, I've got a 32-inch Scepter 1440p 144Hz IPS display in place. Surprisingly, it offers solid color accuracy for its price point. Keep in mind though, it's just a placeholder. The upcoming Project iFrame will take over this spot once it's ready. In the meantime, this display does the job. To maintain a single cable connectivity solution, I'm rocking a QG USB 4 dock. They sent me one for review, but I initially couldn't get it to work due to a persistent firmware update issue. Finally, it's up and running, and so far so good. I love how it keeps things tidy with permanently connected ports, power input, USB 4 connection, display port, and USB 2 ports on the back, while the front sports 10 gigabit USB ports and an SD card slot. 
My mouse of choice is the Utech Smart Venus Pro. It's an MMO mouse, but I've mapped all 13 extra buttons to DaVinci Resolve Macros, which is the total game changer for editing. As far as my keyboard, it's a customized Keychron K6 with spring swapped alias silent switches for a smooth typing experience. Next. While the MacBook Pro's built-in speakers suffice for basic audio, I wanted something more immersive, so I picked up a pair of Sennheiser HD 599 SE open back headphones. They were on a flash sale on Amazon for $80, $100 off, so it was a no-brainer. Finally, I'm lighting up my workspace with a BenQ Light Bar Plus. I have their Light Bar Halo in the studio, and I just can't work without one of these light bars now. Total game changer when it comes to reducing eye strain. And that's it for the setups. Of course, bridging the gap between us is our Asator home backup server, our ISP gateway, and we can't forget Kermit and Chicken, the African dwarf frog couple. And I think that's it. Did I miss anything? Yeah, what about telling me where you hit all the cable mess? I don't see a single wire anywhere. <laughs> True, for this desk, it was pretty easy. I mounted a 18 outlet power strip to the back of the Alex drawers and used J channels to route all the cables to the center where they're neatly concealed behind the drawers. Going with minimalist setups and not using big power hungry tower computers, a single power strip is more than enough. And you absolutely crushed it with the room decor. You managed to put together those acoustic panels for that YouTube vibe. Knowing we'll be filming a bunch more content down here. But hey, props for not pushing the theme too far with the cliche black and white photos or art and choosing something that reflects us. A unique blend of our army days together with our journey as a couple and a family. Those plants too, the perfect pop of color we needed. Well, I'm glad you approve and I look forward to spending more time together in the same room even if we're working on separate tasks. And thank you all for joining us. Let us know what you think of our new office in the comments. Hopefully you saw something here that inspired you or sparked a design idea. As always, be sure to give us a like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.